hello hello welcome back to another video my name is Gemma and today I am going to be highlighting some of my favorite books by Asian authors so if you saw my video last week you'll know that I recommended some books based around World War II in honor of the historical fiction readathon and another readathon that I'm taking part in this month is the Asian readathon so I thought I would also highlight some books by amazing Asian authors that I highly recommend. So let's get right into it, shall we? We will start with a non-fiction memoir, and that is We Have Always Been Here by Samra Habib. I read this pretty recently, like in the last couple of months, um, and Samra Habib is a Canadian Pakistani author, and this is her memoir about what it was like moving from Pakistan to Canada, the cultural divide, and on top of that, what her experience was as a queer woman with those cultural backgrounds. And I really enjoyed this book. I thought it was a very well written memoir and it certainly um, expanded my understanding of Pakistani culture and sort of how family dynamics worked for Samra. Obviously every family is different, um, but within her family and some of the things that um, culturally clashed between sort of the Canadian culture and the Pakistani culture and yes I would highly recommend. The next book I'm going to recommend is one that I never see anybody talking about on booktube and that is Silence is a Sense by Leila Al Amar. Leila Al Amar is a Kuwaiti author and in this book we are following someone who's fleeing their country and seeking asylum in the UK and <clears throat> She gets to the UK and she struggles with how she is treated. She's in a small apartment. She tries to connect with her local mosque, but she finds that quite challenging and she becomes quite introverted. And it's about what she says and what she doesn't say and the effect of that cultural shift on top of trauma that 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 effect has on her and I thought it was fantastically written I thought it was really good insight into the life of people who are seeking asylum and seeking to become British citizens and yeah highly recommend and I don't know why it's not talked about more on booktube if I'm honest next we're going to move to a fantasy uh, and that is The Poppy War by R.F. Kuang R.F. Kuang is a Chinese author and this book is a military fantasy set in a sort of Chinese-like fantastical world and we follow a young girl as she attends quite a prestigious magical school and starts to understand her powers as the politics in the world come to a bit of a a bit of an impasse <laughs> um, and what happens after that. This book is very much sort of split into two halves. The first half is very much sort of magical school and the second half is very much military fantasy. Um, I like both of those things, so that works really well for me, but I know that people have struggled at that midpoint because of that, but I highly recommend it and I do really need to get to the next two because this is a trilogy. Next, we're gonna go for some magical realism. And this is a book that I have mentioned before on my channel, that is The Night Tiger by Yangzi Chu, who is a Malaysian author of Chinese descent. And in this, we follow uh, a girl and a boy in Malaysia. And it's quite difficult to summarize this without spoilers, but there is stuff going on in the city and stuff going on with the boys professor and they think that there is a tiger sort of taking people out <laughs> and it's it's really a lot about the relationship between this boy and this girl and almost almost sort of murder mystery vibes to it but more literary if that makes sense and I really enjoyed this and I particularly enjoyed all the references to Malaysian culture and how Malaysia sort of came to be and the people that make up Malaysia and why that is and yeah just all the cultural stuff I thought was really really interesting and again highly recommend. 
take a shot every time I say highly recommend. Let's see how drunk you get before the end of this video. The next one I have is a Japanese author and that is Yoko Ogawa and I'm going to be recommending The Housekeeper and the Professor. This book is really short, it's practically a novella and we follow a young woman who is asked to go and sort of be the housekeeper of an elderly professor who has uh, short-term memory loss and he like attaches all these little pieces of paper to help him remember to his like jacket and it's about their relationship and it's this is a very quiet novel if you if you want something plotty this is not the book for you this is very much a character study and a look at relationships uh, intergenerational relationships um the main protagonist's son also features quite prominently in this and how we care for our elders and all those sorts of things and how important memory is or isn't in some cases and I just thought it was delightful to read I thought it was really fantastic and yeah would definitely recommend to people who don't need a strong plot next up I'm going to recommend Home Fire by Camilla Shamsi Camilla Shamsi is a British Pakistani author and in this we are following a girl whose family start to get taken in by extremism or her brother starts to get taken in by extremism and it's very difficult to describe because though that is a big topic in itself the novel is again similar to The Housekeeper and the Professor this is quite based on character and interactions between families and I would definitely recommend this I think it was long listed for the women's prize a few years ago as well it was just it was just a really interesting exploration of family and extremism and the effect of that on a family next up I have another non-fiction and that is Persepolis by Marjane Satrapi who is an Iranian French author so <clears throat> I'm pretty sure a lot of people have heard of this, but this is a graphic memoir documenting Marjane's life in Iran, particularly when religious tensions start to bubble over and she has to move from Iran and live with family elsewhere and her experience growing up and the effect that that had on her as a child, as a teenager her struggle with her own religion and it was just marvellously done and this was my first experience of a graphic memoir and it got me hooked so yes definitely recommend if you haven't picked this one up it's really enlightening and certainly filled me in on a lot of Iranian history that I was not aware of and the last book that I'd like to recommend is another fantasy and that is The Bone Shard Daughter by Andrea Stewart who is a Chinese American author this was released last year I think and I think the second in the sequel comes out this year I think it might already be out in America it's due to come out in the UK soonish I think and in this we get multiple perspectives and we're in a fantastical world where shards of bone from the general population are taken and then used to create almost artificial life um <clears throat> yeah I'm not really going to tell you much more about the plot that's sort of the general setup and we follow the daughter of the emperor the emperor is sort of getting old and a bit infirm and sort of soon to shuffle off this mortal coil and we follow her and her direct competition sort of like an adopted son situation as they sort of battle for who's gonna take leadership we also follow several other characters from other places in this kingdom where you're not sure quite how they're all gonna come together at the end of the first book you can start to see it pulling together in places um but there's a smuggler who was by far my favorite character who takes on like a, a little pet um sort of a fantastical creature who is just adorable and he's one of these characters who doesn't really want to be good but he is good <laughs> and yeah really enjoyed reading his perspective there is lgbtq rep in this as well and we have like a mystery character 
where we're not quite sure how she fits in. I have some inklings now that I've read the first book, but um, yeah, so we see like little snips from that. And it's just, it's one of these that is building all these puzzle pieces and you can see that it's going to all come together as the series continues. So yeah, I would highly recommend that also. So yeah, those are some books by Asian authors that I have thoroughly enjoyed over the last few years. Let me know any recommendations. I just want to say thank you so much to everyone who recommended books on my World War II video because I've got so many great recommendations that I will be adding to my TBR. So similarly, if you have any good recommendations of books you've loved by Asian authors, please drop them below and I will add them to the ever-growing TBR also. Have a lovely day, guys, and I will catch you later.